Everyone has a special road that brings them to spiritualism. On today's show, our topic is the road to spiritualism. And this is Wednesdays with Willa. I am your host, this uh, Willa White, and this is my weekly podcast that airs on Wednesday mornings at 10 a.m. Eastern on my Facebook page, Willa White Medium. Also goes out on the Lilydale Facebook page as well as YouTube channel and on blogtalkradio.com slash Lilydale Radio. Now, blog talk's a, li- a listen-only feature, uh, but however you want to tune into the show, uh, if you want to see us, you'll need to join us on Facebook Live. And this also goes into the archive videos if you want to watch it again later on. And there are lots of shows that you can... Uh, look back at the archive videos. I've, this is year six of Wednesdays with Willa, and we've had a lot of great guests, a lot of great topics. And on my show today, I am delighted to have with me Goethe Lestock. Thanks for being here today, Goethe. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. <laughs> Goethe is, is definitely a, a wonderful lady in Lilydale, and we're so grateful that she could be with us. She's an international medium and resident of Lilydale, and she's done a lot of uh, great work with the Healing Temple through the years, serving as a healer there. And she's had her own special, special journey to spiritualism, and we'll get into that in just a little bit. I do want to make sure everybody's aware of uh, Lilydale is off-season. I get a lot of questions about, can we come to Lilydale? Yes, you can come to Lilydale. There's no gate fee, but there aren't any daily events that are going on. That only happens during the summer season. And the 2023 summer season, if you'd like to mark your calendars, starts on June 23rd this year. It'll be a 10-week season uh, full of events and workshops and wonderful things that you can take part in. And here in Lilydale, it's snowy and winter and uh, fairly quiet, I would say. So if you want to go to the Wednesday night Healing Temple service that is live in person at the Healing Temple here uh, in Lilydale, if you're interested on Wednesday evenings, or you can tune in online on the Lilydale Healing Temple page or Lilydale Assembly. So, without further ado, I'd like us to get into our topic. We've got Gerda here. She's, uh, you probably noticed she's got an accent, and she'll probably include why that is <laughs> as we go forward. And uh, she's always a snappy dresser, and you may have seen her serve at the, the stump for, at the Inspiration Stump for Forest Temple, and she'll, she'll sometimes have a hat on and something glorious and to Lots keep of, my brains together. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but we're glad that she can join us today and share her story and inspire us about her road to spiritualism. Well, first of all, thank you so very much for having me. It feels very special. It's a privilege to share this time with you and everybody else who is out there. And I hope, my hope is that what I'm going to share with everybody it's not to discourage or scare, or but to encourage, to make sure that you never quit, that you never give up, that um, there are many different roads to take us, sometimes knowing where we want to go, and sometimes absolutely having no idea where we're going. But keep up and don't give up. Well, my journey sort of started very differently. Uh, I was born in Tashkent, which was part of Russia, but I was raised in Poland. I was born Jewish. At nine years, my parents sent me away to a special school, not because I needed special education. It was just a professional at nine. And I lived with a Catholic family. So... Not to cause any question with the children why they have to take the class, the catechism, and why am I not doing it. So, of course, you've already got it. I was raised Catholic. So, so far, I'm born Jewish, I'm raised Catholic, and I move on. Unfortunately, in 1968, things changed, and everybody remembered me only as a Jew, and I left Poland as a political refugee. Now, living in Poland, there was only three religions, and that is Catholic, some Jewish, and some Jehovah Witness. So I've never heard of any other religions till I landed in the United States of America. 
which is my country, my mother, took me in when I was stateless. And don't you dare say one bad word about it. Anyway, let's move on. So I am here. I met a very lovely man, born and raised <clears throat> Lutheran, Missouri Synod Lutheran. So everything is good till he proposes and we will be married. And I'm like, wow, okay. We're wanting to have a family, maybe children and everything. Being raised a Catholic, Roman Catholic in Poland, Missouri Synod Lutheran was a skip and a hop. That was very easy because we all know that that's first break away from the Catholic Church. So I said, okay, there's no problem. I will join your religion. So as I love to say, in one week, I married Ralph, I married God, and I married my wonderful country, the United States of America. So now we have born Jewish, raised Catholic, and now I am baptized Missouri Synod Lutheran. Learning. Through all of that, there's this angst. There's just something. Somebody says something, something happens, something just does not click. In the meantime, <clears throat> my father was a medium, and after he had his dinner and a little shot of vodka, then he'd go off and he was seeing people, and I really never completely understood what he was doing. But I was sort of playing. At one point in Rocky River, Ohio, a neighbor says, Hey, Gerd, are you dabbing at different things? We are starting a healing circle. Now, we're talking 30-some years ago. You know, this is not something you talk about. It. So we formed Secret Society. Mm -hmm. Ooh. It was very special to come to this group by high. Somebody had to really guarantee for you. So that's how it actually started, doing healing. And there was this lady that used to write. I had no idea anything but automatic writing at that time. So once a week, we met. Secret society. We did healing. And whoever needed healing had to be highly recommended. So they don't blow us and they put all of us in the institute. Those days, you didn't speak about it. But it was awesome. But once I started that and this automatic writing and everything, the angst became even more. It's like, here I am very involved <clears throat> with a beautiful Lutheran church. Very, very surprisingly, I was even on um, head of the committee for the school, which some Missouri Senate churches even now have the women's suffrage. Mm -hmm. So for a woman to move up, that was high. Mm -hmm. But there was just something. Something just didn't click. And finally, one day, in one of the meetings, there were a school of four churches. Something took place, and when I left, I said, I think I'm done. Because if that's what Christianity is all about, maybe I should stay Jewish. But I don't know where I'm going, so I'm going to go to I don't know space. And by the way, I don't know space is a very good space to be. So if you're ever challenged enough and you really get very confused because things just, just make no sense, go to I don't know. It's a beautiful space because when we are in that space, it's when we stop demanding or stop forcing where we want to go because mm -hmm. we don't know. So we are open. And of course, in those days, I didn't understand what it means to be open. To get out of the way of the universe. Which again, it's a very important part. Get out of the universe. Put out what you hope. And then stay out. Stay open. Mm -hmm. So you're not interfering. 
Because you see, a lot of times when we go, I want, I want, I want, I want, well, <laughs> infinite intelligence, God, spirit, however you want to call this higher power, gets confused and says, well, to the make up the mind, we're not going to nothing. So when you go to this, eh, I would like something. I like religion, but I'm not sure where I want to go. So I'm just going to be out. So at that point also, I was very involved with business and professional women, which is an international um, organization around the world supporting women and promoting. And one of my colleagues there one day says, I am moving to Lilydale. And I'm going, Lilydale sounds like a tin sultan, okay, whatever <laughs> it is. Good for you. I'm very happy. She says, you have to come and visit me. And I'm thinking, oh, yeah, I'm in a hurry. You know, I'm living at church and I'm going to a tin sultan, right? Never sounds mind. Sounds like the I don't know space. You also went to the sarcastic space. <laughs> Oh, is that how that came up? Oh, okay. I didn't I mean see. to. Well, we, we, I think we can relate the, about the I don't know space okay. because we've all at some point had to go to the I don't know the answer to this. I know. And I have to give over to a higher power. I know, yeah. but that's not easy to do. No. So anyway, <laughs> off my friend went, to went and moved to Lilydale. Okay. So one day, you know, a month later, a few months later, maybe even a couple of years later, I decided I'm going to this outdoor concert. My husband at that time looks at me and he says, that's not the type of music you like. Why do you want to go to that concert? I don't know, but I definitely want to go to that concert. He says, okay, we're going to that concert. So we went and it was outdoor, there were vendors, and I'm walking around and all of a sudden, I hear, Gerda, I am so glad you're here. And I'm like, okay, beautiful young lady. No idea who she is. And of course, with my face, so look, she looks and she says, I am Arlene's daughter. And I said, oh, my God. Oh, how nice. She says, my mother is here and she wants to talk to you. She wants to see you. And I'm going, oh, wonderful work. Here's my phone number. Make sure she calls me. I'm not going to say the last name because you know who that is, Arlene. Okay? But fortunately, two months ago, she made her transition to the spirit world. So anyway, we met. And of course, you have to come to Lily. That came up. Another invitation. Invitation Ex number two. Except at that time, it did not feel like Tinseltown. Mm. At that time, felt like, okay, I am an I don't know space. I like religion. She's not throwing down me anything about religion, you know, mm -hmm. trying to convert me or anything. Mm -hmm. Just a beautiful spiritual place. I have no idea what spiritual means, but sounds. So I said, you know what? Actually, I am going to come. I am going to come and visit. And so off I go. It was right before the season. And I remember the beautiful Lazzaroni restaurant. I mm. drove by and she suggested, why don't you stop, pick up some dinner so we have something to eat? And off I went. And I came through the gates and there was something. Um... No words to describe. It's sort of the same feeling when first time I was in Bethlehem and walked into the space, to the place of Ruth's um, memorial. And again, I've never yet found funny, just came across anybody who can describe what is that feeling when you walk into Bethlehem. And that's the feeling I had here. And people all speak, I feel something, but I've yet myself cannot put into the words. But I knew that I was home. Mm -hmm. So, my host, who invited me, introduced me to somebody else. We had a very lovely weekend. And when I left, 
I'm going to say, go to the site. There is a beautiful book written by Wicker, a religious writer, Lily Dell, the town that talks to the dead. And how she summarizes, I will not change my religion, but my life was changed forever. It was the most positive, the most wonderful book. She came undercover to discredit Lilydale and walked away with a beautiful love. And that's exactly how I felt. At that time, I did not know there was a religion, but I know that my life will never be the same. There was a change. Well, shortly after that, I signed up for two years to become a minister. Are you with me? So we started as a Jewish, went through Roman Catholic, Missouri Synod Lutheran, and now I'm starting to be ordained as a spiritual minister. Of course, I already joined the church, and of course, at the right time, I already submitted my application and asking to be accepted by the assembly. And I never forget, I never forget my interview. One of the gentlemen looked and he says, Gerda, you've been every place, oh, religious. Why, <laughs> why Lily though? Why this? And please believe me, it wasn't my knowledge. It was not my intelligence. Somebody spoke right through me and said, this wandering Jew is no longer wandering. I am no longer a wandering Jew. I found a home. Mm -hmm. So, yes, I did fulfill all my classes and I passed and I was ordained in 2000. Just as we started everything new in 2000, yeah. I was ordained um, and that's where I am. As of spiritualism, in one hand, it's a very, very simple religion because it's not just a religion. It's a philosophy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, um, it makes you think. <laughs> yes, it, it almost demands that you think for yourself to do your own research and your own sensing of spirit. But on the other hand, it's a very difficult religion. Because as we only have very few simple principles, we don't have dogmas, we don't uh, convert people, very, very, we're based from love, not fear. Mm -hmm. So I don't have to sit here with my legs properly crossed, not that you can see them. <laughs> but one of our principles <laughs> says, we create our own reality. So if we create, well, I've sure created my reality <laughs> before I got to where I was going. Uh -huh. But we cannot blame anybody. So that makes it very difficult. Yeah. Maybe for all of you or some of you who were born in the spiritual religion, but some of you who are attempted and have some old beliefs or old you cannot blame God. You know, I cannot say, well, God is really good to Willa today. She looks beautiful. She's smiling. She is just very special to her. And I don't know about myself. Because it says, I create my own reality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Again, I hope what I'm sharing, I'm underlining even if sometimes you are, I don't know. Trust that you are divinely guided. Don't ever disagree, this, this, any sign. A young girl calling your name on a concert that you <laughs> were no business being there. I was divinely guided. I can understand it now. Because I know how spirit works, how we are guided. We are not, uh, there's no coincidences. 
that many years ago, I and Willa was chairing different <laughs> workshops. That's right. And yeah. we had fun. We did. We coordinated workshops and, and yeah. really learned a lot. And yes. We got to be in each other's yes. energy. And I mean, it, it was, yeah. you know, it was fun. It was very fun. It was fun. <clears throat> it was not coincident. Yeah, we would share like a whole week. Yes. Of, uh, of someone else. Of somebody's class. Yeah, coordinate and class. class. Okay, mm -hmm. that's when I was told about my wonderful healing energy. And I thought to myself quietly, yeah, well, you know, I've done that for a long time <laughs> in a different form. But again, we are just a channel. Mm -hmm. I'm going to share one of the class that I took with someone from England. They are very, very strong and spiritualist. And he was talking about healing using comparison like, you take your car to a mechanic, and if he only has one screwdriver, how good is he going to fix your car? Mm -hmm. But when he has a whole toolbox with different tools, you know he's going to do a good job. And I really, really like that. And I thought, you know, though I was secret society, then eventually I joined the international healing group that was involving all denominations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I built the little box of tools. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of course, many years ago, the very first, well, after I was ordained, so it has to be 2001 maybe, uh, I befriended the couple ministers with Unity Church in Cleveland. I'm still full-time and just coming to Lilydale. And they welcomed me to do a healing service, a full service on Mondays. And everybody who was in the society, secret society, and everybody we showed up, it was open. And it's been open ever since. Beautiful. It's not a secret anymore. So sometimes we get to the point in a short trip, and sometimes it takes us a little bit longer. But there's very many different <laughs> routes to get yeah. to where we are to be. Mm -hmm. To what are we uh, sign up for? Or what are we creating? Now, to be very honest with you, um, would that be much easier and nicer if I created a little bit easier route? I have no regrets. Absolutely none. Because every religion has beautiful teachings. As long as we don't go overboard. As long as we don't use this fear base of the religion. Every religion has something good to teach us. You know, it's like when you go into a buffet dinner. You don't have to eat everything. But every place, there's something good. So, from that point when I look on it, I, re I have no regrets by my whole life anyway, but <clears throat> there's been different roads I created. But I've learned a lot from different religion. Mm -hmm. And uh, for that, I'm thankful to the higher powers, to the infinite intelligence, to God, to spirit, However we want to name him. He's not sitting on the throne and punishing us. Because God is love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when love, there is no hell, there is no fear, there is no punishment. It's just, if it is, it's taught by a man to keep us in line. <laughs> so I was wondering uh, if we could circle back to, in the beginning of your road to spiritualism, uh, you mentioned that your father was a medium, that mediumship was in the family, and that I just, I'm just wondering, what did that look like? What did, how did, how did he uh, do his mediumship? Well, to be very honest with you, I don't know, mm -hmm. because I left Poland, and we that was long before I went on my journey, knowingly where I'm going. Mm -hmm. So we've never spoke about it. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, but I would like to share with you, in 2000, right after I was ordained, I also find out that I had family in Israel. Mm. They was looking for me. Mm. And I thought, oh, this is really fun, a spirit. This is a fun, good joke. I just <clears throat> got ordained as a spiritualist minister. I embraced this, and now I have family mm. in Israel. But let's see how it goes. Three cousins. The one that is two months younger than me. We are like one. Mm. So I had to make a choice um, to go to the Olympics uh, at 2000, because at that time I was working with inner city kids with boxing, or go to Israel. Yeah, kickboxing, right? Red, no, not kickboxing. Boxing, boxing. Regular, classic, boxing. yeah, Olympic. With, with, with Olymp the, uh, yeah, ah, Olympic. okay. I do turbo kick now just for <laughs> exercise, but no, that was Olympic style boxing. Or go and meet my family. And I landed in Tel Aviv at the older one of the cousins looked and she says, well, I think we have another Penina. We don't need to take any tests. She's family. And I thought, I wonder what she met, Penina. Yes. What does that mean? She is a medium. Oh. Very different how she works. Mm -hmm. She gets her messages at night. Mm. And can I share my story of her mediumship? Yes, yes. And, and what, when you say Penina, is it like... That's her name, Penina. Oh, okay. That's her first name, Penina. Okay, great. So I invited them to America. I want to share my home because mm -hmm. now I know <laughs> we are on the same, you know, wave and everything looks good. So at that time, I had a fish, Betta. You know, those little fish. Oh, those little beta those fishes. Beta yeah. fish that, you know, yeah, they're all by themselves. Mm -hmm. And his name was Czar. So when Penina was there, we changed his water, and she knew Mad Czar. Mm -hmm. So she goes back, and I don't know, a couple months or so, I am looking over, and Czar is floating. I was very upset. I was crying. Czar, why you left me? My phone rings. Gertush. No cry. Gertush? Gertush. You know, it's sweet. <laughs> okay. The four languages don't try, you know, you Americans change them from Richard to Dick, that I never know what I'm saying. We in Europe softening them. Okay, we're making okay. them, you know. Gertush, don't cry. And I'm going, Penina, why do you know I'm crying? She said, the Tsar came to say goodbye to me. Now, that's mediaship. Yeah. So, she doesn't do um, like what we do here. I don't really know what she does, how she does, but she has two sons, and as she says, one is normal, has a wife, children, and everything, and guy, that's his name, uh, sits and meditates and does different things and very spiritual. So, it sort of lines... But could be the Kabbalah in the Jewish. Mm -hmm. So there is some kind of connection with that. Mm. But I have to tell you, I was really impressed. Yes, yeah, Zar came to say goodbye to me. Was that in a dream then? Because you said she gets her mediumship at night. Is probably. that in a dream or just probably. when she meditates at right. night or something? But that's how she gets messages. Uh, I probably don't get any messages because I don't sleep very well, so nobody comes to bother with me. Well, and it is true in terms of, of getting mediumship at night. It's better if you're on a good sleep routine. But I have to tell you, where it's really, really well. good, where it's really good, it's on the open sea. Mm. Yes, the, Gerda likes to cruise. The energy, <laughs> it's unbelievable. Um, I had a couple... Special people that ask for healing mm -hmm. when I was uh, on my last cruise, and uh, it's it's just it's just uh, I don't know why because it's open it and so all water the, and, and, the and all the entities and gods and everybody is out there free. Mm -hmm. um, I was also very blessed that my first world cruise 
uh, I was invited to do some uh, platform messages mm. and it was very, very well received. So, um, spiritualism, it's a philosophy. It's not just a religion. It's proved. But as far as my understanding and what I'm sharing, it's not a gospel. It's my understanding and my experiences it's healing. You know, I am a evidential medium and bringing the evidence that people recognize who is speaking to them. To me, the sessions are healing and closure. Mm -hmm. So, mediumship and what we do here, it's, it's scientifically proven too. It's science. It's, um, it's beautiful. And what is the most beautiful is too that in church you don't get beat up every Sunday for donations <laughs> or you didn't pay your membership or you're not expected to go and steal sheep. We welcome everybody. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yes, that's true. There's no tithing that seems to go on and those things. It's we welcome. What you, you know, what you want to give. Yes, mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. welcome everybody. And during the season, to me, it's just an awe. Uh, everybody, all different walks of lives, age. We've seen a lot of children, families. They're coming, they're seeking, mm -hmm. they're looking. Um, those are the healing vortexes around here. Mm -hmm. So I know that uh and we don't expect everybody to turn spirituals but i know they're walking away touched mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that their life if not completely changed it gives them something to think about it thought provoking mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and um people come back and back and it's back. Like it becomes a pilgrimage yes for them to come every year. Yeah, it's and like I'm thinking. They don't come. They feel really weird and off. Like I'm thinking to do the alchemy. Oh yeah, <laughs> you know, she was telling me she's thinking of, of doing El Camino. If you know what that is, it's over in Spain. It's a long trek. Walk. I say trek. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's so just somebody. Walk. Somebody just done it, and I followed, you know, her journey, and very spiritual. Very different, but and that's what they say people do for different reasons. And I really feel that that's what Lilydale offers. Mm -hmm. No matter what reason you are guided here, no matter what reason how you think you got here, it was divinely guided. Yes. There was a reason divinely for you better to help you. Uh, teaching classes that we, you know, we have beautiful presenters, beautiful classes, that you walk away with something to think about it, mm -hmm. to learn, or to enlarge. And like I said, I have absolutely no regrets. And I had a interesting, <laughs> yes, <laughs> not just spiritually from a point of a religion, but People come from all over, and it's that idea of all roads lead to Rome, Theo. You know? you know? Yes. So, uh, in terms of this, I think there's a mixture of what was your family that you grew up in like? That seems to be a component to someone's road to spiritualism. And in your yours, you know that your father had mediumship, but he didn't talk about it. No, and, and so I was so A late. lot of people who can relate to this because they uh, know that someone was a medium or a mediumistic in their family, but it wasn't something that they all, always were able to tap into and talk to them about. They just know that's kind of residually in them, almost like on a genetic level, they can feel that connection. And it's not until they start to explore spiritualism and their own mediumship and healing abilities that they start to go, if, the, if someone else in my family can do it, I can do it too. If other people in... Uh, my circle, my friends can do this. I secret this society. <laughs> In Greta's case, a secret society. Then we don't need to have that right now. But you're absolutely, absolutely right. You see, I also believe that everybody is a medium. 
Now, my favorite explanation and comparison, it's music. Everybody can learn how to play the piano. Not everybody is going to be the virtuoso. Yeah, some people are going to be awful at it. <laughs> well, <laughs> it just but they tried. What, a level of intention they, right. and also natural skill. And open, open it up, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And maybe they're not going to be the virtuoso, but it opened them up to appreciate the music differently mm -hmm. or to seek where it's taking them. And I really feel the same thing is with mediumship, with, you know, our spiritualism. It's not just about mediumship. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful religion mm -hmm. to live by. Yeah. Open it up. Now, you sort of tapped it around. Some are born natural mediums. Mm -hmm. as I, Some are opened it up. The mm -hmm. thought help them opening up. I call it igniting the soul. Okay. Something happens either, it's they're raised in it or there's that sense of uh, either trauma happened and they had to go to the God right. source to get through whatever they were going through in their life. They had to respond on a soul level. And a lot of times people have had to experience grief. Someone find you know passes that's really important to them, right. vitally important to them, and they start to go. I want to talk to that person still, and then how it starts. Yeah. Well, you see, like with my friend, and uh, how it started. And someone very close to her crossed over, who lived in Lilydale, and then came to her with a message, mm -hmm. and that's how it started. So that's exactly what I'm saying. There are different roads, different yes. guidance. How we are guided. Mm -hmm how we get there to the Mecca. And there's a choice that happens within you. You make a decision at different points in, in the road to say, yes, I want to continue and explore more, or no, I want to keep myself pocketed up. And in different uh, instances in your life, you've, had, you've said, no, I want to expand. I want to learn. This is an opportunity to grow. And with spiritualism, you saw that too, an opportunity to grow. Uh, absolutely. And... <clears throat> When you start your road, it's like education. It doesn't get easier. You're challenged. It gets harder. Just like your kindergarten, then your elementary school, mm -hmm. then we get <clears throat> to college. It's not... You realize that was easy. This is harder. Mm -hmm. And that's the spiritual how you grow, and they look and say, oh, really, you're already there? Well, let's see what we can turn here, how we can really work on it. Yes, you can say, well, I liked it. I enjoyed it, just like the lady who wrote this marvelous book. I'm going to stay, and that's okay, too. Mm -hmm. But she experienced something that touched her life. Mm -hmm. And I feel that's what happens when people come here. And I think that's what I love about spiritualists. We don't expect everybody to turn spiritualists. <laughs> we don't promise them anything. But we open, we welcome everybody. And there's a difference between what I would consider a card-carrying spiritualist and a person who's just a spiritualist in the privacy of their own heart. So a card-carrying spiritualist is the person who gets a who gets membership in a spiritualist church and has a card that says, I am a member and I right. pay dues and whatever. Um, but there's also the spiritualist that's in, just in their heart that maybe they can't share that with very many people, but it's, it's who they know to be themselves and their identity. Well, I think that's yeah. probably what that angst, as I, yeah. as I say, that yeah. why I had all of that, okay? Because remember, I was sent away to live with the Catholic family when I was nine years old. Mm -hmm. I spent very little time with my Jewish, you know, mother and father mm -hmm. because the school break and then I was back again. Mm -hmm. And then I was back again, then I wasn't. So but and when then you were home, did they do Jewish traditions? Did Only they... high holidays. Oh. Okay. I remember that. Of course, we're talking after the war, there was no synagogues, so that was held in somebody's home. Mm -hmm. But did I learn anything? No. Do I know how to pray? No. Do I know Hebrew? 
No, I do Yiddish because that was the original language and that's mm -hmm. what my parents spoke at the house. Mm -hmm. But, you know, a couple of years ago, I was in Israel again uh, for the high holidays. And of course, I went with my family and I stayed there and I was respectful. But do I know what was going on? No. Oh, it sounds like you need to ask. <laughs> that's what I would do. But I learned. I the energy, you know, yeah. I've learned. I, I, I respect, I love going to the Wailing Wall. Mm. I love watching all the groups. There's all different denominations, different people coming yes. and they go to the Wailing Wall. They all go to the Bethlehem. They do not only tourists, it's spiritual. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's healing. It's extending. So, um, no, I'm grateful for the challenges. So what did you take, what do you feel you took from um, Catholicism that helped you? So we've done the Jewish, you know, what did you, what do you think that you took from Catholicism that helped you? To this day, I know all the, the, the prayers in Polish. You can go, doo -doo 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 -doo. yes ma'am, <laughs> I can go through and I've been out of Poland 50 plus years. And the funny part was the first time when I was, in Abidjania, which is a healing center in Brazil, they have uh, every day what they call rosary. You mm -hmm. know, somebody says rosary. Mm -hmm. And of course, I don't know that in English because Lutherans don't do that. But boy, do I still know them yeah. in Polish. So I still know all these carols. And the, there, there's an important thing, especially people say, well, that's just being repetitive. But there is something that when you learn something and, and it becomes infused in your being and you can say it by rote, by memory, there's a, you can then know that it's entrenched to there and then you can breathe the essence into those words. And it's a different form yeah. of praying sometimes, yeah. you know, it's not harmful, it's nothing wrong. And it can be a mind focused technique right. to, do, yeah, to pray to just, the rosary and you know, to train your mind to be able to hold the prayer space. So it's, yeah. it's all good. And then, um, what do you feel that you took from being Lutheran? Um, the privilege to, you know, being how the church is constructed, and the, to be able and the privilege to serve mm -hmm. at the school. Um, but um, I think that was the most that kept me not allowing, you know, like at one point I had a discussion, or you know, with my husband and I said, you knew that I did reading, so that I dabbed with different things. You knew when you married me, but... So you had started to do readings before being a Lutheran. Right. Mm, okay. And you accepted, and I gave all of that up. Mm. But um, so to have to ignore that part of yourself I, was I did, causing this angst. Because right. I was going to ask you, yeah. where did the angst yeah. come no, from? In but that? that's yeah. where it came, and I think yeah. that's where that finally sort of come in, you know, with whatever happened at that meeting, mm -hmm. it was like overflowed it, and it yeah. was like there was something that I am to do. There's something I need to be. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go to I don't know. Right. And I'll be guided. Mm -hmm. But that's again a very hard thing because we over tend saying, I want this, I want this, please help me. I want this. To just say, Heavenly Father, God, Spirit, whatever is the highest and the best for me, mm -hmm. guide me there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you guide it through. There was no coincidences. Through the valley of angst. Through the valley of angst. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, because we all get to that point where we're just saying to ourselves, this doesn't feel right. This, I feel like I am I'm in a discontent. But it can be an energetic discontent. It can be a spiritual discontent. Right. It can have those elements to it. But with me, it was definitely um, religion, definitely spiritual. Yeah. Yeah. It was definitely... It, it, coming to a point where it was like subconscious all that was fighting yeah. <clears throat> inside that this was 
not where I am. This is not where I, you know, and that's why um, the thing just came out. This wandering Jew is no longer wandering. It's so interesting. The, the wandering Jew, you know, the, the dysphoria is, is the word for that, but there's a wonderful book, uh, The Wandering Jew by Eugene Sue. Yes. It's on, I don't know if you've ever read it. It's super thick. It's like practically like War and Peace thick, if you know that novel is. And it's, it, there's a, an essence of having to go through a lot of trauma and a lot of drama. And then, as you pass through those things, there's a sense of, I am wa walking with God. There's a difference between wandering around and really feel that you're walking with God. Does that make sense? It does, but it's still, when you're in it, it's you wandering, mm -hmm. okay? You're and, wandering and wandering. And wandering to the place, and it's maybe, I don't, I, you know, I would agree with you, I don't know if wandering is the right, but that's what he's mm -hmm. using too, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the wandering Jew. It's because there's a history of being thrown out of yes. Spain and wandering to Feeling a place, you're banished right? Away from other things. Right, not yeah. having a country. Mm -hmm. You know, the yeah. Jews never had a place till Israel was born. It's so you're wandering. You're always on somebody's land, and I need to say that, and I'm saying with utmost respect and love to the lessons. But uh, <laughs> my lessons through those different religions were not exactly. Yeah. That I would want anybody else to go or wish. Mm -hmm. You know, we all have challenges, different challenges yes. and different learnings. But don't ever regret anything. And if you feel the angst, it doesn't matter how whiny the road is or how sometimes, um, really? Why am I going to go to that concert? I don't know, but I'm going to that concert. Well, that's your divine hunch. That's your intuitive lead that you lead. follow. And then right. it not, it's not always about us, but sometimes it's about networking with a particular person that needs help. And sometimes, sometimes would you agree with me that it's getting out of fear? Mm, absolutely. 100% out of fear. Getting out of fear that um, I think uh, we spend too much time because of fear because of the unknown. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where, when you saw a sign, it says, hmm, hmm, interesting, wonder why, hmm, let's see where that goes. When you have this feeling to, okay, it sounded like a tinsel town, but she's inviting again now, that doesn't sound that way, it sounds something different. Why not to go and visit my friend? Mm -hmm. and see what it's all about. Yes. So obviously, the first invitation, I was not completely ready yet. Right, right. Because I was still part of the Lutheran Church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When the second invitation came, I was, I don't know space. Mm -hmm. I was open. So God, infinite intelligence, spirit says, She's ready. Let's go take her and see where she goes. And I so love it. I love it too. And so then, I think an important part of this road to spiritualism is, yes, there's the de the destination for many is that they do come to spiritualism. But spiritualism is not necessarily just that one point in time and in space. There's an expansiveness to spiritualism an exploration that continues. Absolutely. And the, Absolutely. the road doesn't necessarily end in a finite location. There's an infinite. This is what I said. Oh, you think you're down in spiritualist? Oh, well, let's see what curve can we throw in. That's right. It's That's right. ongoing and it's not easier. Mm -hmm. It's more challenging, mm -hmm. but it's rewarding. It is. So we, a lot of us will learn through struggle. And some of us will learn by watching other people struggle. So we don't have to as much. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think us as a spiritualist who affirm our principles, I think we need to free ourselves 
free ourselves yeah. and take complete responsibility of what are we creating. Mm -hmm. That's very important. What are we creating? But embrace what we're creating. Not every lesson it's easy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I had one time, one of the um, ministers, <laughs> you know, from Unity, we became close friends, and she said, Gerda, I am so tired of the lessons. When are they? <laughs> We're growing. It's a new lesson. Yes. And but um embrace. Yes. Embrace it. Embrace and it. And see where the road takes you. Right. Free yourself. Well, my road right now I created is taking me on the around the world cruise. Yeah, she's a world traveler, Gritta is. So <laughs> I think I created <laughs> and I'm gonna be good. Um I'm creating peace. I'm creating freedom within me and acceptance. And I think that's what I wish and want to extend to all the listeners. Mm -hmm. And it's important. We can grow when we free ourselves. Mm -hmm. Free ourselves of whatever boundaries, what is holding us back. And uh, when it comes... You know how they say, and uh, Mother Sarita was really, and uh, you know, Mother Teresa mm -hmm. always used to say too, when one door closes, God at least opens a window. Not everything is always shut. So if there's no other door, look for the window. And when it's a window, it's always your size. You can crawl through it. <laughs> yes. And I think that's what is important. Depend doesn't matter you're staying with your own religion. Good. If that's what gives you comfort, that's yes. what it brings you peace, that's what teaches you. Yes. Absolutely. Visit Lilydale. Learn something different and stay just like Miss Wicker did. But free yourself. And she still visits the Lily Dale. Yes. Yes. And it was a beautiful book. Yeah. Oh, when it first came, I remember somebody said, Lily Dale, isn't that the place you've been going? And I said, yeah. So you talk to the dead? And that's again, when I was freed, what do you do? Well, I talk to the dead. You don't have to make it secret anymore. It's out there. No one dies in Lily, though, the beautiful movie. You know, what do you do? Uh, well, uh, I talk to the dead. <laughs> I'm a well, medium. actually, you talk to the living. To the living, right, because life yeah. continues. Right. Nobody dies in Lily, <laughs> or nobody dies anyplace. And, of course, I always like to joke to the people, say, are you a medium? And I say, well, actually, I'm an extra large. You know, I'm working on being a medium. But it's good. It's free. Yeah. It is, it's good and it's free and excellent points that you're making. I appreciate that. I, I'm just grateful that you invited me and allowed me to share that. It's maybe a little bit different component in your radio, but it's still um, healing, mm -hmm. setting yourself free, embracing the unknown. Mm. without fear you know sometimes when I left Poland in 68 you're talking going to unknown and being with no because they took my citizenship away so I was stateless I didn't belong to no country um, here I am the door opened I was guided to this one person then I had, I never listen. I don't live with politics. I heard this radio in America making an announcement that they're taking so many Jewish family. And that's it. When I went to the American embassy, it was like, child, you had to come overnight to Warsaw. Do you sleep with the radio? I said, no, I was divinely guided. Mm. He says, I only just now got in this special pouch. What are we doing? And you're already here. 
divinely guided. Yes, yes. So we get feelings, message, and the message doesn't have to be spiritually during the night. It could be something you saw written mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that you go look at it and go, hmm. hmm, let's look at it. Yes, it's that's your hunch, that's your follow up, that's your follow up. That's story. right. And it, it will lead, as Greta has said so beautifully, to freedom. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you for being on the show today, Greta. It's been lovely. Well, I hope <laughs> that brought some thought, something to think about, something to revisit, mm -hmm. and something to try to all of you. Thank you again for having me. Oh, thank you, Gerda. We appreciate you sharing your road to spiritualism. It inspires all the rest of us. It was a beautiful road. Slightly difficult, but I guess I created. And there's still more to her road. <laughs> <laughs> it's not done. Maybe this will be the yellow brick road. <laughs> no, it's not done. We still grow with That's another it. lesson. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, thank you so much for being on the show today. And if you want to find out more about Gerta, you can go to her website, which is Rev Gerta Lestock. And that way you can uh, check in on her if you'd like. And of course, tune in next week for Wednesdays with Willa. It'll be same time, same place, uh, 10 a.m. Eastern here on my Facebook page or on blogtalkradio.com. All right, everyone. And happy Thanksgiving. Thank <laughs> for you. Yes. That too. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Bye-bye.